preparing for life at the sharp end. For when push comes to shove, police dogs like Bear must keep their discipline. Bite training is uh, the criminal aspect side of things, and as you see, Bear is taking a bite on the sleeve. The dog will release on our command, and he has to have a nice clean release. Bear! Out! Here! Come, 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 come! Here! Come! That will minimise any injury, but also give you complete control over the dog. You don't want a dog rebiting, and that's the thing we've got to be very careful Stay. But what you've got to be wary of, if you're going to run from a police dog, they are going to bite and they're going to hurt. So when you're told to stop by a police dog, police handler, please stop, because they're going to hurt you. One of the reasons for the Triforce Agreement, as it's called, was to share costs. The Commissioner wants to be sure it's all going to plan. It's a very positive review to actually just see how well it's gone and, and to see if it's financially viable, which I think it is. But it's just to, to you know, always make sure we get the very, very best for the people of Gloucestershire. And if working with other forces uh, helps, that, that's what we'll do. A lot of these dogs are very specialist and actually sometimes it's better to actually share the training, share the specialist dogs. And of course, sometimes you'll need more than one. So it kind of works um, to everyone's benefit. The dog's welfare is also an important part of the review. The Gloucestershire dogs are based here in Gloucestershire, that's where they spend most of their time. And certainly the welfare of the dogs is paramount and we'll be looking at that to see just how well they travel. Talking to the handlers, it seems OK, but I want to be sure. The fact of the matter is we make sure they've got everything they need. The cars are fully air-conditioned, they've got a run-lock system. So a lot of people see the vans running and they think that can't be right, the dog's got to be hot. We leave them running because the run-lock's on which keeps the air-conditioned rolling over. So they keep nice and fresh and cool. So there's plenty of ventilation in the vehicles, plenty of room for the dogs to move and also they're supplied with fresh water on a regular basis. So I can assure anybody these dogs are very well cared for. The van to them indicates fun day, games, so they love their vans. And we have plenty of venues all around the three counties that we now patrol to make sure that dogs get plenty of fresh air and plenty of exercise. I got Bear about four years ago. Uh, he was a rescue dog. He had a sad upbringing for him. Uh, he was um, neglected, uh, I'm sad to say. He had lost a lot of fur, but he was a very active dog. And the owner who had him thought he had potential to be a police dog. And when I saw him, I knew straight away that he would make it. He's on a 12-week general purpose course. And throughout that course, he'll learn to track, he'll learn to search for property, uh, he'll learn to do obedience and go through the um, obstacle courses. So quite a lot of facets that he has to do within that 12 weeks. Another very important role we have to play within the community is the dangerous dogs. Um, and sadly that's becoming quite a big issue. Um, dog on dog attacks, um, dog on wildlife attacks, and sadly dog on people attacks. And we have to have the equipment and the knowledge to deal with that. If I show you how this works, basically we plug the system in. It then gives us a bit of protection from the dog if it decides to attack us. And by giving it a quick bolt, you'll see these um, electricity coming from the shield and that will pacify the dog. And if it does hit the shield, it'll get a little bolt or a little jolt and it'll back off and then it'll leave us to uh, move the dog into the corner where we can then use the pole to secure the dog and safely take the dog out of the situation and put him into uh, a kennel in the, in the van. Okay, good boy! Good. And again, missing vulnerable people, we search for an awful lot of times and the dog comes into their own in that situation. Down. Ted is a new dog, uh, got rehandled by Shelley when her dog was uh, retired uh, a few months ago. Uh, a real good prospect for us at the moment, he's doing really well and he is now an operational police dog. Okay. Marley is an explosive search dog, so she'll search for explosives and put component parts of explosives. We have proactive drug dogs and we have passive drug dogs. Slightly different roles. A proactive drugs dog is trained to search for drugs, all types of drugs, firearms and component parts of firearms. And interestingly enough, they're also trained to search for cash. And they can tell the difference between the different currencies that are available and that are ready, readily out there. Uh, and that's down to the, uh, the makeup of the currency. That'll be the paper or the ink that it's made up of. Um, she's 10 years old, which is hard to believe. When you look at her, she's a real young looking dog. Uh, she'll be cut up to retirement soon, sadly, and again, been a fantastic asset for us. Gloucestershire police dog Omar and his handler Debbie Shields we were among the stars at Crufts, where they were judged the police dog team of the year. Together they saved a man's life, despite being faced with extreme violence. Back home, the chief constable led the celebration. I'm really, really proud. I'm really proud every day of what we do and what we contribute to the 
communities of Gloucestershire uh, and I mean that really sincerely and I love dogs, I'm an animal lover and I love to, to, to both watch but also see and hear about the fantastic achievements of uh, the dogs and clearly their handlers on the end of their dogs. The people of Gloucestershire should be absolutely delighted and proud of these officers and proud of these dogs. I think the people of Gloucestershire would want to congratulate them as well and if I can do that on their behalf it's the best part of my job. But while Omar can now look forward to a happy retirement, his canine colleagues must be ready for whatever is thrown at them.